Good morning everyone on Tuesday 27th of April and the first really wet day um, with significant rain I think we've had for a long long time but the gardens will be soaking it up and enjoying it all the plants will be blossoming and the crops and the fields will love it and ducks too of course and it's not too bad it's just a bit damp but maybe a day in just reading having a quiet time rather than visiting folk in their gardens Time for having your coffee. So, cheers. I'm having my coffee now with my, my Juma mug. She's never far away, is she? She's always around. But, you know, there's some um, who could probably tell you just how many days it is since we had significant rain, whatever significant rain might be. And what significant rain might be will be different for all of us. Weather forecasts are full of these statistics. It's either the the wettest March since, or the warmest day since, or the, whatever. There's always a, a since, you know, as if it was going to be amazing news. And, and yet sometimes it's the wettest of that month since like five years ago. We need a little bit of greater context, I think, than that to really make these things important. But some people will mark these off, they'll know exactly how many millimetres of rain we've had every day, how many hours of sunshine, and we have had lots of hours of sunshine and really, really good weather. So let's not complain about today in the rain. I'm sure it's probably upsetting somebody's plans immensely. And sitting out in a garden with friends today is not the best. I, I appreciate that. But you know what? Things are moving on and things are certainly moving on. Counting down. We've got lots of countdowns. We've got just now less than three weeks till the 17th of May, which has become a big date in our diaries, perhaps, of when we can go into someone's house. We have lots of countdowns and we seem to get excited about them. How many days till or how many sleeps? We never had how many sleeps in my house that was just counting days till, but nowadays it's how many sleeps until something happens. So we're counting down. And the church likes countdowns as well. We have the Advent countdown till Christmas. We even have the Lent countdown. And whether that's 40 days or 46 days will depend on whether you count Sundays or not. Sundays are pretty important to count, so you're probably as well doing that. And we're in the midst of another countdown in the church. A countdown between Easter Sunday and Pentecost. 50 days to count. Oh, we're maybe not able to manage that quite so well. 50 days is a long, long time. But we're, we're about halfway, pretty much halfway now. So maybe 25 days we can manage to count down till Pentecost until another big festival in the church. We count down till Christmas, till, till Jesus comes in different form, till God arrives on our earth in a different way. Maybe we should be really making more of counting down to Pentecost when God's Spirit arrives in our world in a, in a new and unexpected way. It certainly was a big countdown in Jesus' time and in Jewish um, traditions now to count down between the festivals, the two harvest festivals. And Pentecost was a, an even bigger one than Passover. But counting down. And what do we do in those countdowns? I sometimes count down, you know, how long it's going to be until the lights change if I'm travelling. I was in, had to go to Edinburgh. Great excitement. Going to Edinburgh, across the bridge, driving. It was amazing. Even if it was going to the dentist. But then I did go down to, to pop in and visit a friend as well. And the frustration of, of so many traffic lights and so many roadworks. And you found, found myself counting seconds at the traffic line. How long will it take to, to change colour? How many times have we got to change before I get my shot? Ways of passing our time. But rather than just way of passing the time, if we can be make it a constructive countdown, then that is even better. Thinking about those three weeks we have until the 17th of May, when we might have people in our houses socially chatting to people. Wow! You kind of maybe, like me, look round and think, that'd be great. Where are we going to sit? 
Maybe I'll have to actually clear a chair, make space for them. Maybe I should move things around. No, it's it's for four months since just after Christmas that we were in lockdown and thinking, you know, I've still got some Christmas stuff that really should be put away in a cupboard somewhere. Maybe I should do that before anyone comes in. I've got the Christmas candle sitting over there. I've even got Christmas wrapping paper at the top of the room there, just in case we were locked down till next Christmas. Why well, put it away if you're going to need it again? But perhaps now, the countdown might include tidying up. I think in a year ago now, pretty much, in the first lockdown, probably by this time, there were a lot of houses and homes which were clutter-free, cleaned within an inch of their lives, and totally tidy. Maybe in this lockdown we've not been quite as um, fastidious in doing all of that. I wasn't fastidious then and I'm not now, so I've got a wee bit tidying to do before we start socialising indoors again. But what we should also be doing in our countdown to, for example, Pentecost, let's put that one in the frame. Because that was the time when we celebrate the birth of the church, the birth of the, the Christian community, of, of the Jesus family. That's a day we celebrate that the Holy Spirit did come in, in a very, very different way. Holy Spirit's always been with us, but in a different way to help us to do different things. And maybe we need to start looking to that and thinking about that in these next few weeks, about 25, 26 days, a bit longer than the other countdown. But time to focus and time to think, because when that this year's Pentecost comes, our church will be emerging. And we need to try and ensure that it emerges in a very good and positive way and that we're ready. Jesus told the disciples on Easter morning, wait for me, wait in Jerusalem, hang on a bit there, just let me get things into position. Well, this year, he's already with us. Maybe we need to be helping to get things into position to launch back into the world as the kingdom of God, as God's representatives on earth, but certainly as a church and a community of faith who can be and must be of use to the world, bringing the gospel, proclaiming the gospel in word and in deed, and helping people to know that our God is their God, is everybody's God, is all creation's God, and is there to help us. Getting our places sorted out, it came quite hard to me this morning because I, I sat at the my desk early on this morning looking for my book to write my reflection and I couldn't find it. And I just thought to myself, I can't find my book. Maybe that's an indication, a sign, that perhaps we shouldn't be doing reflections anymore. And then I looked around my desk and said it's probably more of a, a sign that I need to do some tidying up than clearing away. And then I found it. And you know what the actual lesson was? My memory. Get your memory sorted out. I was looking for the wrong book. I started a new one last, the, just beginning of this week, and it's a different colour. And I've obviously colour-coded my head and I was looking for the wrong colour. So maybe it's, we've got to work out what the signs mean as well and not just jump to the first conclusion, but to stop and think and consider. And yes, tweak our memories a little bit. Tweak them towards God, towards faith, towards understanding what it is that we are working towards. And it's not a countdown. Sorry about all that. Bit of a red herring there. It's a count up. It's a count for adding every day another wonderful, glorious day of being in God's world and being able to contact people, to speak to people, to help people know that they are loved and remembered. So it's not a countdown. It's a count up. Every day that we awake and live, no matter whether it's raining or beautiful sunshine, no matter if we're locked in, locked out, locked up, whatever, it's a day when we live in God's creation and when 
we rejoice that God lives in us. So it's a count up, not a countdown, if you understand what that means. Let's pray. Lord God, we pray that you, through Jesus, will remind us again and again that your Holy Spirit is here to help us, to lift us up, comfort us, hold us every day. For we praise you that through Jesus, you came with love to help us understand that your gospel is for all creation. That you came into the mess of the world and the chaos of individuals' lives to bring your order through mercy and grace. We praise you that you let nothing stop or stall your word, rather using every challenge to prove that we are able to trust you, to turn to you for help, knowing that you will not turn us or indeed anyone away. God, we praise you that in our lives today, you remain through your Holy Spirit, you remain in all the mess and all the chaos, all the challenges and fears, ready to hold us firm, but to lead us gently, to inspire us and to stir us up, opening us, mind, heart and spirit, to see that you are already at work and to hear your voice call us to join you, knowing that you will equip us as you need to ensure that your creation is a countdown to healing and wholeness, to unity, justice and peace, and is a count up to every day that we can be part of that witness, that worship and that service. We give thanks for the rains that water the earth, help the crops and flowers to grow, and pray for so many people for whom the rains do not come and for so many for whom the floods never stop. We give thanks for our community, so many caring, so many helping those who are in need, busy gathering in and delivering out essentials for life, those signs of compassion and care and love. We pray for communities that are not working, who are overpowered by those who have no thought for other people. Communities who find themselves in the midst of conflict or dispute. Whilst families, young and old people around us, the unemployed and the overworked struggle without the help, without the support of a community coming together. God, we give thanks for the community that we have around us so many eager to help. And we give thanks for this community on Facebook, for the support that we can offer one another from the north to the south, from the east to the west, gathered together, not physically, but through this media, this social media. We give thanks for all the good that it brings. And we pray for those who find only words to criticise or bring down or destroy on social media, who use words and platforms not to build up but to bring down. Lord, help us today to use our words, whatever social media we use, whatever phone we use, whatever words we shout over the fences to our neighbours next door that all the words we use will be supportive and encouraging and building up those around us. We praise you, Lord. Help us to know your spirit is alive and well within us and help us to turn to that same spirit, to you, to find guidance for today and tomorrow as we prepare our homes to welcome family and friends as we prepare ourselves to put on our coats and our jackets and our scarves to meet friends in gardens and outdoors. Lord, so may we prepare ourselves and our church community to listen, to follow and to rejoice in the blessings of our God. We pray 
in Jesus' name, today and always. Amen. So perhaps it's a day for staying in with your coffee or maybe just for staying in with your pal. <laughs> she has a head, she's just sleeping. Juma, there you go. You just They thought you were sleeping and you are. So no matter who you have around you, enjoy your day and remember every day counts. So make this one count too. God bless.